are the chords that come from the minor scale? Well, that's what we're here to talk about right now. This is a minor scale chords guitar lesson. Welcome, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. We're in the middle of this big series called How to Learn Guitar Chords, and this is episode six. This is gonna be a great lesson. You're gonna learn how to play your chords through a minor scale along the fifth string of the guitar, up and down the neck, as well as in the key of A minor with some common open string guitar chord shapes, and how to see your minor scale chords in relation to the chords that exist in a major key, and this is called relative minor. Also, how to see your minor scale chords independently from the major scale using something called parallel minor. And I'll be using some great song examples to illustrate these points. Songs by Dolly Parton, Neil Young, Gautier and the Beach Boys. In episode four, we learned all of our chords through the major scale, and we learned them along the fifth string of the guitar, up and down the neck, and we used one of my favorite chord voicings that has the root on the bottom, and then the fifth, and then the third on top. We worked on playing those chord voicings through the major scale in the key of B flat. To find the chords of the natural minor scale, we're gonna jump to the sixth chord of the major key that we just played. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're gonna keep all the exact same chords, same chord shapes, same places that we played in the key of B flat, but we're going to treat G minor, which is the chord we landed on here. That's the sixth chord of B flat. We're gonna treat that as our home base chord, as our primary chord, as our tonic chord and we're gonna call it one. And all the chords are gonna stay the same, but the numbers are gonna shift accordingly once we call this one. If we do that, then we're playing the chords through G natural minor. The one chord. The two chord is diminished. The three chord is a flat three chord and it's major. I'm gonna go back down. Two is diminished. One is minor, that's our tonic. Flat seven major. Flat six major. Five is minor. Four is minor. There's flat three again. Two diminished would be here. I'm gonna go all the way back up. Four minor, five minor, flat six major, flat seven major, back to the tonic as one. So all the chords stayed the same, but the names changed. And we just changed what is our main note that we're targeting, starting on, ending on, emphasizing, making sound like the main chord. If we just played the roots of those chords that I just played, we'd have the G natural minor scale. One. Two, flat three, four, five, flat six, five, four, flat three, two, one, flat seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, two. One would be down here, but we're just staying on the fifth string. Those flats are there in the labeling because of how those notes are different from the major scale. So we have flat three, flat six, and flat seven that we have to indicate as such because those notes are in a different place than it would be if we played a normal major scale off of G. So this is called the natural minor because it naturally exists as a mode of the major scale. This is also why it's called relative minor because G minor is the relative minor of B flat major and B flat major is the relative major of G minor. They share the same notes, they share the same chords. We're just changing what we're calling our main chord, main note, our tonic. If you're interested in going deeper with modes, I did a video recently that thoroughly explains all the theory and relationships of the major scale modes and how that works. So knowing the chords that exist in a major scale and then finding the sixth chord and then calling that one is one way to locate your natural minor chords. But I encourage you to know your chords through the minor scale independently from major. You don't wanna always be having that middle step of thinking major and then translating it to minor. If it's in minor, you wanna be able to just think of it as that. To work on this, let's go ahead and choose the same root that we had before with the major key. So we're gonna choose B flat. So having located all the chords in B flat major, and then also working on the chords in B flat minor, this is what's called parallel minor. Parallel minor is when the root stays the same, but then all the chords change. Relative minor is when the chords all stay the same, but the labels change. So here are those chords through the minor key. One is always minor in a minor key. Two is always diminished in a minor key. Three is always a flatted chord from where it would have been from a major key, so it's a flat three and it's major. Four, you just call four, you don't have to say flat four or sharp four because it's the same spot that it would have been in major, but it's a minor chord. Five is minor, 
6 is flat 6 major, 7 is flat 7 major, and back to 1. That's the structure of your chords through a natural minor scale. Always any key, anywhere, any voicing, doesn't matter, that structure's the same. 1, flat 7 major, flat 6 major, 5 is minor, 4 is minor, flat 3 is major, 2 is diminished, back to 1. I play off this first fret on the fifth string because it's just a great way to get a linear view of what's happening in a key. It helps unlock the logic of what's happening in the music before getting confused with open string chords and crossing strings and stuff. So if you can play your voicings through the major key, your chords through the major key, as well as through the minor key off of that first fret up an octave and back down, I know if you're playing on some guitars, you won't be able to reach that high. But if you can reach that high, then go for it. If you can't, just go as high as you can and come back down. Let's go ahead and play our chords through the natural minor scale in the key of A minor because it's such a common key to play in. A is going to be 1 and it's minor. B is going to be 2 and it's diminished. C major is going to be the flat 3 major chord. D minor is going to be the minor 4 chord. E minor is going to be the 5, the minor 5 chord. Flat 6 major is F. Flat 7 major is G. And back to A minor as 1. If we played the chord progression to Jolene by Dolly Parton in this key, we would label them like this. One, flat three major, flat seven major, one. And I, it's a mouthful to say all that. It's accurate to say one, three, seven, one. That's accurate if it's understood that we're in a minor key and we know that the three chord is flat three major and we know that the seven chord is flat seven major so either way is fine i just like to put those specific labels on every chance i get jolie 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 please don't take him just because you care flat seven The last episode in the series was all about technique and how to execute chords better, and I used Neil Young's song Heart of Gold as an example. So let's take that song again and talk about the chord labels. The intro is going to be 1, flat 7, 1. Lots of 1 with the minor keys to flat 7 major and back to 1. It's happening a lot in uh, minor songs. So we have 1, flat 7, 1, 1. Flat seven major, one. Okay, the verse progression is one. Flat six major, flat seven major, three. I wanna live, I wanna give. I've been a mind for a heart of gold. And the super smash hit Gautier song, Somebody That I Used To Know from a while back, uh, that main chord progression is just one, flat seven, one, flat seven major, one, flat seven major, one, for most of the song. And then the chorus goes to one, flat seven major, flat six major, flat seven major, boom, 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 boom. And that's the whole song, just those two progressions. Now, all of those songs are using chords that naturally exist in the natural minor, which means that those are shared chords with the major key, the relative minor, relative major, the natural minor existing from the major mode of the major scale. We didn't go outside of just what is naturally existing there. So th these can actually be thought of if you labeled the chords as being the major scale, what's the difference really? Uh, you, you could, and sometimes it's, open to interpretation. You know, are we thinking of this Neil Young song? Is the E minor one? And then it plays these three major chords. Well, it sounds like G major right now when I land on that G major. So why is this not six, four, five, one? It could be. So in some cases it could be one or the other, but usually the minor chord being the first chord or the last chord or the more emphasized chord, you can say, oh, yeah, I'm thinking of this as minor. Well, traditionally in functional harmony, a key is not really considered actually minor unless it's doing something very specific harmonically to target the tonic chord. And that specific thing is to take the five chord of the minor key, which is naturally minor as we learned. So A minor, the five chord of it, one, seven, six, five, the five chord is an E minor chord. Well, if we make that an E major chord, now it's targeting, pointing towards, wanting to resolve to the 
tonic minor, the one minor. This in the traditional sense of music theory and composition is what makes it truly the minor key and not a modal key. Listen how this E major chord can resolve to A minor. <laughs> I played a different voicing of A minor here just so I could make sure to get that note I want to resolve to as the top note, but have a complete A minor chord. That's why it looks different. Very classical. So that one raised note is right below the one of the scale. It's called the leading tone, and its purpose is to lead to the tonic of the key. The major scale naturally has a leading tone. There's a seven right below one and it leads up to it. So the minor, the natural minor scale does not naturally have that, so we just force it into it to get that satisfying resolution sound that we feel back in the day, it was considered like, oh, that's how you, that's what you have to do to resolve the music. It's absurd not to, of course, you're going to resolve with a leading tone. So changing that one note in the five chord, the third of the five chord raising up, it's now a major five chord. That's the leading tone creates this harmonically satisfying resolution. Doing that is how the harmonic minor scale is born. That one note changing, we're thinking of it in chords right now, harmonic minor scale, but now you think, oh, how does that affect the scale? How does that affect all the notes? Well, you have your scale one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, raise that seven up to be right below the one as a leading tone, but keep the rest of the scale as it is, that's the harmonic minor scale. Playing that harmonic minor scale in our spot that we've been playing along the fifth string off the first fret would sound like this. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, seven, one, seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, two, one. Let's check out an example of a song that uses that five chord as major in a minor key, and the song I want to use is Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. The opening progression of the song is a one chord, flat seven major chord, flat six major chord, very familiar to us now, this sequence of chords, but then the major five chord right next to, half step away from the major six chords, quite effective. I'll try to combine the melody with it here too. So that's the original key of that song. If we just do that same progression in A minor with these open string shapes, one, flat seven major, flat six major, five. have it, minor scale chords on the guitar. We talked about natural minor, harmonic minor, parallel minor, relative minor, all that good stuff. Practice your chords along the fifth string off that first fret with those voicings through the minor key as well as through the key of A minor. And if you want extra credit, do it through the key of E minor as well. Lots more on the way. Please subscribe, please like, please hit that notification bell. Leave me a comment and let me know what your number one takeaway was from this lesson. And if you have a friend or someone you know that might find this lesson or this series useful, please send it their way. I'm keeping these coming and your support really means a lot. So thanks so much for watching. There's a link to the whole series in the description. Next week, episode seven of How to Learn Guitar Chords, we're gonna take just what we know already, no more theory stuff for that particular episode. We're just gonna take what we know and we're gonna be able to play chords that we're already familiar with all over the guitar in various places, making sure we have at least a handful of spots we can play any one chord. Looking forward to seeing you then, and thanks again.